Medical school interviews are around the corner and you need some serious interview prep advice. My name is Nimit and I got into the University of Toronto Medical School in my third year and I'm going to tell you how to answer every single medical school interview question possible. This will help you destroy your medical school interview, whether that's MMI or panel. We'll also be providing model answers with all of these strategies. And if you haven't checked out part one yet, go watch that first and then come back. Before we get into the juicy details, let's first talk about what type of questions you will actually encounter. So there's usually three types of interview questions. The first is the situational type in which you'll probably be presented with a situation that's most likely an ethical dilemma. So for example, let's say you're in an exam and you see a friend cheating, what would you do? The second type is personal questions. These basically ask you to describe a life experience. And an example would be a time you had a conflict with someone else. But the thing is, they could ask some really crazy types of personal questions. They could even ask you to discuss what you think about a quote. What? The third is policy questions. These ask you about implications of particular laws or policies like mandating vaccines for healthcare workers. These can be healthcare related, but they don't have to be. Keep in mind that these question types could be mixed together. So there will be some questions that don't quite fit into any of these categories. What? We'll be talking about how to answer these more complex questions towards the end of the video. We'll also be throwing in a bonus tip near the end that will help you take every single structure to the next level. Now let's see how we can answer each question type step by step. For your ethical scenarios, start off with a summary. Doing this will not only show the interviewer that you understand the question, but it'll help you orient yourself when you're thrown into the interview station. After that, be sure to acknowledge that the situation itself is really difficult because it is. This shows the interviewer that you're taking this seriously. Going back to the cheating scenario, you could say something like, Hi there, it's a pleasure to meet you. My name is Rusho and I'll be discussing the difficult situation in which I caught one of my friends cheating on an exam. Your next step is to talk about the main concern or concerns. This will help get your priorities straight and make sure you're only talking about the things that are important. This should be based upon bioethics and the four principles of bioethics, which are autonomy, beneficence, non-maleficence, and justice. We'll leave a link below to make sure you know what these are and and for our specific case, my answer would be something like, my main concern in this scenario is the well-being of my friend, but also the academic integrity that I must maintain for myself. After all, you are a student and a friend. Moving on, you want to gather more information. There's a reason these questions are so vague. It's because the interviewers want to see how you can critically think about things. <laughs> So for this to happen, you can talk about the perspectives of each person. This could be directly or indirectly. And this is very crucial to your answer because interviewers want to see how open-minded you are. This also shows that you're being empathetic because you're able to see someone else's perspective. Now let's look at this example. From my own perspective, I am primarily concerned about the well-being of my friend. I would want to first verify whether my friend actually cheated because I know the penalties for cheating can range from a mark of zero on the assignment to even academic expulsion if my friend has cheated before. Also, it would be unfair to my friend if I were to take action without actually talking to him first. That's why I would talk to him in a private environment where they're comfortable. From my friend's perspective, they may have cheated because they weren't very familiar with the material taught in class. They wanted to ensure they got a good grade because of their transcript requirements. Finally, I need to consider the impact that cheating has on my classmates. Now, academic integrity is really important and everyone probably studied really hard to do well on the exam. And so it would be very, very unfair if someone were to have some sort of advantage over my classmates that's not allowed for everyone. Therefore, I need to take action with all of this information in mind. Once you've discussed the perspectives, you need to come up with an answer and a decision. This is by far the most important part of your answer. You need to keep in mind two things. One, don't do anything illegal, of course. And two, consider multiple perspectives and viewpoints. This again shows your open-mindedness and shows that you can look at things from different sides. You also want to make sure you're empathetic and act as a mature individual would. Here's an example. If I were to not talk to my friend and report the matter directly to the professor, my friend may not have the chance to explain their side of the story. And if they didn't cheat, they might be unfairly penalized. This could also ruin our friendship. If I didn't do anything about it, my friend may continue cheating and not to mention, this would still be unfair to the rest of the classmates. Therefore, I would discuss the matter privately with my friend and bring it up in a non-accusatory
accusatory way. If they didn't cheat, I would apologize, but if they did, I would encourage them to report to the professor. This would be hard for me to do because they're my friend and I wish the best for them, but cheating is simply against the rules. This way, they may even be able to get a reduced penalty. If they refuse to turn themselves in, I would unfortunately have to inform them that I would have to inform the professor in order to maintain academic integrity. To conclude your answer, explain what you would personally do to support the individual in question and just provide a recap of your courses of action. Here, you can also restate your main concern. This leaves the interviewer with a complete description of everything you said to make sure they didn't miss anything. Here's what that would look like. Regardless of what happens, I would be there for my friend to make sure that they feel supported and that they're aware of the rules surrounding cheating. If they feel like they don't have the necessary tools to study well, I wouldn't hesitate to study alongside with them to make sure that they don't cheat again in the future. To summarize, I would first verify whether my friend was cheating with the concerns of the well-being of my friend and the fairness in the classroom in mind, and then I would take action based on this information. What I'm about to say now is completely optional, but it might help elevate your answer to the complete next level. Yeah, <laughs> boy. You want to incorporate a personal example in these questions. This will show that you're actually speaking based on experience and not just hypotheticals. I'd include something that has a lot of interpersonal interactions, like a cashier or hospital volunteer, and this would help a lot, especially for the part where you're talking about how you'd like to have a private conversation with the individual. That does it for ethical questions, but what about personal questions? In this interview video, we talked about how you should review your ABS and try to pick two to three activities that you have stories from that you can talk about in your interview. Start by doing that. You'll thank yourself because you'll have stories to talk about on the day of instead of coming up with them in your interview. Start by summarizing the question, just like you did for the ethical questions. The question that we'll be discussing is, tell me about a time when you had a conflict with someone else. And you could start by saying, a time when I had a conflict with someone else was when I was a hospital volunteer and I had a conflict with a colleague. Once you've completed this, you're going to want to use the STAR method for the meat of your response. STAR stands for situation, task, action, and result. The S is asking you to describe your situation. You want to keep this short and make sure that you're focusing on the rest of the answer later. I would say something like, as a hospital volunteer, I was responsible for directing patients to their appropriate destination. One time, I had a disagreement with one of my colleagues about how we should split our teams to maximize reach and get most people to their destination. I said there should be teams of three, while they said there should be teams of two because a third person is unnecessary. Moving on, T stands for task. This is meant to describe what your goal was in the situation, and this should not be the focus of your answer. Try to keep it between one to two sentences because it's more than enough. You could say, my task here was to resolve the conflict and find the best possible way to maximize our reach. Next comes the A, or action. This might sound obvious to you, but this is actually what the interviewer is here to listen to, how you handle the situation. And you're going to want to do this by displaying your elite level communication skills. In the beginning, in the in the bini in the beginning so for example i acknowledge that both of us had differing perspectives and that's why i outlined the pros and cons of our approaches to each other we had a respectful discussion about it and i made sure to actively listen to his concerns so that i could fully understand each of his points so that we could ultimately choose the best approach finally we're at the end of the answer the r the R stands for result. What did you learn? What did you achieve? So in this situation, we can say, at the end, we decided that two members would be effective and we actually got to a lot of patients and served them very, very effectively. We even received praise from our staff about the work we were doing and it was really good. From this, I learned that honest conversation and open communication can really help solve problems that could be sorted out just by talking. And these are some of the ways that I'd like to approach these disagreements. Something positive like this leaves the interviewer with a positive thought about you rather than having some negative connotation on your answer. Now you don't want to end there. Instead, briefly mention how you're going to apply what you've learned to your medical career. This is the cherry on top. As a future physician, I understand that interpersonal conflicts can arise between staff members and that can prevent us from providing the best possible service to our patients. My communication skills learned from situations like this will certainly help me overcome these issues and effectively serve my patients while also maintaining positive working relationships. Let's move on to our third type of question policy questions. Of course, we recommend gaining as much knowledge on healthcare related policies as possible so that you have the necessary background information to answer these questions. 
However, one thing to keep in mind is that not all of them are going to be about healthcare policies. There could be a policy that you've never heard of, or they could be completely made up. You will never know. That's why structure is really important. Start by recapping as you've done with all of your other questions, but do not put your stance about the policy right away. You want to make sure that your interviewer doesn't think you're judging the policy too quickly. Instead, I'd actually say start with a pros and cons approach because this would show that you're looking at both sides. Then you want to talk about the people associated with it and the costs and all of this together is enough and it'll come up with the talking points that you actually need to finish the question. For this scenario, let's come up with an example. Should vaccines be mandated for frontline workers? You could start by mentioning the pros and cons of the vaccine mandate. Some pros would be enhanced protection from the illness. Second would be reduced transmission and third would be less sick days and therefore less staff shortages. For your cons, you could first talk about how some of the workers may be ineligible. Second, it may infringe upon the workers' rights to decide whether to vaccinate or not. And third, the costs associated with procuring the vaccine. At the end of your answer, you're going to have to make a decision. If you side with the pros, be sure to throw in an extension that either minimizes the cons or makes your pros look better. If you side with the cons, be sure to suggest a change in the policy or a completely different policy altogether that you think is better. This is the critical thinking component that your interviewers will absolutely love. Yes! 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 For this question, if you agree with the vaccine mandate, you could say that in order to further this policy, you would educate current healthcare workers on the importance of vaccines in protecting their patients. If you don't agree with the vaccine mandate, you could potentially suggest for a mask mandate to be implemented instead. Now that we've covered all three types of questions, what do you do if you don't get any of them? What if you're stumped and you get something like, go and critique this artwork? You might get that, you never know. So this is how it combat it. You don't have to make any big brain place. You just have to keep it very simple. Answer the question in a logical manner and then back it up with current events or personal life examples that you have. This is the core principle behind all of our answers and you just want to keep following that so you're not stuck in some rigid structure that you can't change. That brings us to the end of the video. Practice these structures as much as you can. And if you stuck around this long, a bonus tip for you is to make sure you use signposting. Start by saying something like this. Now I will talk about so and so. This will make sure that you and your interviewer are on track. Good luck with your interviews and see you next time.